So let's start this inshallah. Because I am local here, I'm not traveling. So we'll go slow. Um, usually when I go to different communities, I, if I travel, I have limited number of hours to teach this entire course, whether one hour or four hour workshop. The biggest I thought was 16 hour workshop on this. Um, but because I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. So we'll go slowly, inshallah. If we won't able to finish in June, inshallah, we'll continue. We are not going anywhere. Um, secondly, I don't know how much you can digest because there are some philosophical concepts. So make this interactive in a respectful way because this is a sensitive topic. So if you have any question, you can raise hand, brother or sister, and I will repeat and I'll try to clarify. Um, but if you want to argue or even insult, then let me finish the program and then you can insult me. But during the program, because everyone is paying attention, um, just um, appreciate the time and then you can ask me for the clarity, then I can inshallah clarify. Uh, I have to say this, that just like um, one of the challenges at the time of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was khalq quran you know this, right? Creation of the Quran. Similarly, at the time of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, the biggest challenge was of asma, sifat, names, and attributes. You remember that? In our time, if I would say this, it won't be an exaggeration. From the social aspect, this is a big, big challenge for Muslims living in the West. How to deal with LGBTQI? Because this is not only struggle, this is not only a challenge from the fiqh perspective. This is challenge from the aqidah perspective. I'll tell you how it how it is. From the ideology or ideology perspective, this is a challenge for us Muslims how to deal with it. Um, and especially when we Muslims are less than one percent here in America, with our defeatist mentality. Can you digest this? Defeatist mentality, which is manifested many a times in our non-Sharia compliant interfaith programs in the masjid, that we are trying to make everything cool, aka halal, even though sometimes it goes against the foundation of religion, because we don't want to present the right Islam, rather we want to stay minority who have the victim mentality, who will claim support. In that way, it makes it difficult for us to even challenge this kind of narrative. So this is one of the big challenge which we are facing. And today I will going to discuss only three things. We'll discuss preface about the works which already been done on this topic, especially from the far right, how to get benefit from the likes of Jordan Peterson and Matt Walsh, and Carl Truman and others, others, just three conditions before you are listening to them. Second is a little bit history about why there is an religious phobia or when people see religion in the West, there is an adversarial lens to them. We'll discuss a little bit history about that. And third, we're going to discuss about the modern and postmodern philosophies and the worldview. Is that clear? Okay, let's start with this. If I have to tell you um, LGBTQI, by the way, I will use political terms, far left and far right. What do you mean, what, what does it mean by far left in American politics? Liberals. I know it's very subjective, um, but what far right means? Conservatives. By the way, this is one issue where everyone is far left. Every, bipartisanship is achieved on this issue, LGBTQI. But anyway, just for, for the sake of understanding, far left, it means liberals, or I would say, radical liberals and far right means extra conservative conservative when we say conservative are we talking about they want to conserve religious values no they want to conserve the values which liberals say every new thing is good that's the essence of modernity right conservatives say no 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 let's go back and conserve that entire post enlightenment idea they also do not want you to go back to god or day of judgment or anything, but rational thinking, reasonable thinking, because left have actually said no to the reason also. And we'll come to this inshallah. Okay. The LGBTQI challenge, sexuality challenge, gender identity challenge, is it leftist or rightist? Leftist. Then obviously the response would come from, or refutation will come from, right. Okay, who are the some vanguards or some, some people who are up and coming and responding to this challenge from the far right. Any names? Andrew Tate? 
Oh, okay. I'm talking about, uh, Andrew Tate is more of an influencer. If I, I'm talking about academic people who have got fame, but they are, they're putting some substance into their work. Andrew Tate is more of an influencer, right? If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joram Peterson, that's good. Um, most of the Muslims on the right or the far right approach, they take benefit from Joram Peterson, FYI. Even if they make a video that Joram Peterson said this or that, most of them, their framework comes from Joram Peterson. So they, he becomes important. Just like back in the days, Aristotle and Plato, um, our, our greatest scholars were going to come up with the theories. So now Joram Peterson, um, lectures are being used by some of the du'at in the West. Okay, who else? Ben Shapiro, that's good. What else? Huh? Trump. Trump. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so tr Trump I would put in the category of um, uh, Andrew Tate, influencer, politician. But I'm saying systematic discourse. Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh made a documentary, What is a Woman? Did you see that? Okay. So even though he's not an academic, but because he's focusing on the same field for a few years, so we can put in that. Can you listen to Jordan Peterson's argument about how he refuted LGBTQ or Ben Shapiro or Matt Walsh and then apply in your Muslim community? Yes or no? Tell me. What do you think? Very good. So what do you have to do? Someone said not fully. What do you have to do then if you're listening to Jordan Peterson or Matt Walsh? Because they have tons of content. Then if not fully, then what to do? Then tell me. Hmm? Take the good. But the problem is in the postmodern time, everyone defined good because when we say take the good, leave the bad, postmodernists will argue, unfortunately, we are living in such a time. Good according to whom? Bad according to whom? That's the argument postmodernists have, and we are coming to that. So I, in the preface, put three conditions. How many? If you're listening to, see, the, nowadays we all are using social media, YouTube. There is almost an undeniable fact that our youth are exposed to these uh, people. So now, what to do to make sure they are using that and making it in a Sharia compliant way, okay? So there are three things. If we will do that, inshallah, we are going to make all of their argument in a Islamic modification Sharia compliant way. Are you following brothers and sisters? First thing, first thing which we need to do when you're listening to anyone at far right, whether Jordan Peterson or Matt Walsh or Ben Shapiro, First thing you need to do is to make, to realize that they are responding to one extreme from the other extreme. This is very important, very important. We as a Muslim, we are not responding to liberalism with conservatism. Our, okay, how many of you think feminism, especially the third and fourth wave of feminism, have destroyed families in mainstream America? Can we raise hand? Okay. Uh, Okay, no hand, okay, no worries. Um, okay, no, I'm coming, sister, I'll, 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 no worries. But now tell me, if you are fed up from feminism, or third or fourth wave of feminism, which is radical feminism, the solution is not misogyny. Solution is not red pill movement, right? If you are fed up from liberalism, that it doesn't give any regard to scripture, then the solution is not to sit in the laps of conservatives, and our problem is the moment you are fed up with one movement, you are going to find another influencer on the other extreme. Because we are trying to swing like pendulum from one extreme to the other because we don't have Muslim voices. True? So what we need to do, if we were going to find Muslim moderate voices, which is usually muted because of the blatant streaming of the left and the right, then eventually we're going to have our own discourse. Unfortunately now, we are not organized. Even if some voice will come, other Muslim scholars or other Muslim influencers will pull them <laughs> because we are not organized, unfortunately. So one thing to first point, if you have to remember, whenever you're listening to far right, keep this thing in mind. They are responding to one extreme from the other extreme. At the level of monetization, do you know how much Joe Rogan or Jordan Peterson are earning just because of the making of the content on YouTube which is favoring towards young men because they are seeing algorithm that okay our main major followers are young men so let's make content which will resonate with them 
you'll get more viewership, means more monetization. So you have to keep this in mind. You have to keep this in mind. So that's the first thing. Second thing, before you will take benefit from far right people, whether Ben, ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, um, Carl Truman, Matt Walsh. Second thing to note, that they used to refute LGBTQ movement, they used philosophical arguments, but not divine arguments. There's a huge difference between prophetic worldview and philosophical worldview. How? When you see Western philosophy, most of Western philosophy arguments will going to recognize what's the problem. You will be able to identify problem but they won't be able to give you divine solution because Western philosophy is deprived of divine solution or divine guidance. Whenever you listen to Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, these people, they are good in recognizing problem, but they won't be able to give you divine solution. Like for example, most of their argument these days against LGBTQ, especially against trans movement, is that, oh, they are butchering kids, they are slaughtering and then doing irreversible damage by these gender reassignment surgeries. Have you ever heard this? We say that this argument is fine, but not complete. Why? Problem with technology, if you're basing your argument only on philosophy, not on divine science, or on divine law, divine law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then technology gets better. It evolves. After 10 years, if surgery gets smooth, then all of your argument will fall. We believe even if technology gets better, morality will stay the same. Is that clear? And that's what they are not understanding, that within 5, 10, 15 years, their argument will be garbage because technology is evolving. So that's the second point. That's the second point. And morality, and what's the problem by using scientific argument? There is no problem. Science or scientific argument can be used as a supportive evidence of the Sharia or the divine law, but it can never be used as a primary only argument. Why? Why we cannot use science as an argument? It changes, it evolves all the time. Second, does science deals with morality? It's a metaphysics thing. Physics or science only deals with whatever you can see, empirical science, physical science. The morality is not even in the epistemology, I'll tell you what it means, of the science. So it's not the topic which science have to cover. And because of the over dependency of science, sometimes we can make this problem or make this error. Last thing before we can move forward, whenever you are listening to the people from far right influencers, because on YouTube shorts, you will see all of these people, Jordan Peterson refuting LGBTQ. And they use only reason, not revelation. They use only reason, not revelation. We have to use both reason and Revelation. And inshallah, I will tell you the history of the um, Europe and most of the Western countries. They don't only use revelation, but they have an allergic attitude when we are going to bring a religious argument. And why they have, inshallah, I will going to tell you within five minutes. Is that clear? The preface was this. Okay, alhamdulillah. Any questions so far? Alhamdulillah. So, just quick quiz. Is it okay for me to listen to Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, and these far-right speakers, scholars, far-right-leaning activists, if they are talking about LGBTQ movement, to have the arsenal so that I can teach or I can apply in my own Muslim community. Yes or no? Yes, if you follow these guidelines. If you are just copy-pasting entire argument without being smart, then you might harm yourself or your community because you will swing like pendulum. Is that clear? This is extremely, extremely important for young people. Um, by the way, um, some Muslim people have, some Muslim scholars and activists have their podcast. Uh, I would highly recommend listening to Mubin Vaid, Ustaz Mubin Vaid, on this topic, Dr. Khal Sharif. Um, and both of them are my friends, alhamdulillah. That's not why I'm recommending them. <laughs> um, and um, uh, others also, but these two um, are very uh, moderate, not modernist, moderate in their approach in how they tackle this issue, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, let's start with Islam and modernity and postmodernity. If someone asks you, but by the way, why we are discussing this, most of these 
this sexuality and gender identity issues usually comes because of this modern and postmodern philosophy. So you cannot understand the LGBTQI movement and their entire coalition if we don't understand the groundwork or the foundation that is modernism and postmodernism. So tonight, tonight, inshallah, we're going to discuss what is that and what's the difference between Islamic worldview and modern and postmodern worldview, okay? Okay, if someone asks you, what is modernity as a philosophy? Okay, what is modernity? What will be your response? Modern, modernity, what will be your response? Tell me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So modernity comes with the age of reason. Um, so first confusion which people have, they mix modernity with technology and modernity with philosophy. So if you are using iPhone 14, no, that's modernity, that's haram. No, that's not haram, Habibi. If that's haram, give it to me, I'll take it. <laughs> but no, you can use. So in that way, we Muslims, we should be very modern in technology, right? Although they overlap because most of this modern technology comes from the West after the post enlightenment when they removed God from their social studies. So there is a, and we'll discuss that later inshallah. But what we are talking about, as you said, is modernity as a philosophy. Modernity as a philosophy. Now I have to tell you history. Where are we? We are in America or Europe? In America, alhamdulillah. Even if you are feel you are in Europe, but you are in America, okay? Okay, you are in America right now. Let's go back to Western Europe, 500 years ago. Western Europe, for a long time, they practiced, practiced which religion? Christianity. Now Christianity had few issues where they went to the thesis and modernity came from the womb of Christianity. I know I will get a little technical, so please pay attention. Christianity, in terms of faith, doesn't have capacity, doesn't have capacity to defend their dogma with rationale. How can you prove to a normal person with logic, with rationale, three into one, one into three, the concept of Trinity? Eventually you have to say, oh, don't question authority, right? Concept of incarnation, concept of Jesus passed away, now you can do whatever you want, just believe in him, you will get Jannah. A rational person will have difficult time in digesting this. Therefore, what they did, they obviously, had to shut the mouth of the philosophers and critical thinkers in their community. So what they did in the Pope, like a, a, a theocracy of the Pope, they made a law, no to philosophy, no to critical thinking, no to logic, no to any of these studies which encourage critical thinking. And if you are a scholar who is teaching these things, then you will be expelled and sometimes assassinated. And they got help from the politicians. Politicians also say you will be socially boycotted or isolated if you were going to use critical thinking and philosophy to question the authority of the church. So it's a worse kind of theocracy which Europe witnessed for hundreds and hundreds of years. Are you following brothers and sisters? Now what happened when you are on one extreme, usually people respond to the, from the other extreme. People responded with this movement called modernity, enlightenment, renaissance, reformation. These are heavy loaded terms, but I'm just summarizing. Around 15th, 16th century, and by the way, they, when they, by the way, expelled some of the philosophers and people who were inclined towards knowledge, where they went? They went to the Muslim lands who were flourishing with the golden ages. So they got the knowledge, or they got the knowledge and ilm of the critical thinking, and through Spain, they actually went back, the entire revolution of the knowledge went back to the Christian majority countries. So around 15th, 16th century, so five, 600 years ago. Are you with me? The movement of Renaissance and Reformation and Enlightenment came, and they said that Christianity is the reason why we are behind the knowledge. Around that time, there was a small movement of scientific developments. 
shipping routes were developed. So people, and obviously now Christianity is also losing, Catholicism is also losing its grip. A powerful group came out of Catholicism known as Protestant. And they started having wars. Catholic, Protestant, and an author, uh, Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox, they were started having battles and wars. Million people, more than million people lost their lives. Europe witnessed bloodbath. And Catholics will say Orthodox and Protestants are kafir and using biblical verses. And Protestants will say the same thing using biblical verses. So if you connect the dots properly, they reach to a conclusion. They say, Christianity kept us away from the scientific development. And they are too hard to handle. If they are come out of the church, they were going to cause bloodshed. So let's reduce the role of Jesus. Let's reduce the role of Christianity to the church. You can do whatever you want in your church. Once you come out of the church, you are not supposed to teach Bible because everyone is quoting the same Bible and they are causing bloodshed. And they will get nightmare because of that. Are you following brothers and sisters? What this process called church versus state in the philosophy language? Secularization. So they say, as long as you are in church, your Christianity will be relevant. The moment you'll go out, don't bring Jesus out. Okay? Now the question comes, okay, in the church, my Christianity is relevant. And this happened in 18th, 19th century. How are we will going to decide about the social laws, about the rights of men and rights of women? If Bible, morality, everything is closed, then how will you decide that? Then how will you decide that? Tell me. It's not coming now from religion. Then it's coming from reason. That's coming. Okay, we are smart enough to figure out what are the rights of men, what are the rights of women. And we are clearly not smart enough because now we are struggling not only on the rights of men and women, we are struggling even on what is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> because once you remove divine guidance, divine morality, this was a disaster. Who is going to decide about the rights of man and woman? Then economically we are struggling, feudalism or capitalist democracy, political system we are struggling, sexuality wise we are struggling. This is modernity. Use reason to find out right and wrong. Don't use revelation. See revelation from an adversarial lens. Are you following brothers and sisters? But then comes this philosophy under, in 1960s called postmodernism. What? Postmodernism. The word suggests postmodernism, something after mo modernity. They came as a reaction of modern, modernism. And they say, modernists, you say use reason to find out what is right and what is wrong. Use rationale, use logic, use empirical data. But whose reason you're talking about? Everyone have their own separate reason. No, no, we are talking about truth with the capital T, Al-Haq. Postmodernists will say, whose truth you are talking about? Everyone will feel that they have their own truth. Because once you remove the divine guidance, how are you going to decide these things? Then everyone will going to say, and you have to just give them regard and consideration. And we are living right now, what philosophers and this civilization can be called as post-modernity. So now, if I have to summarize this entire discussion, in modernity, people used to go back to reason, no to revelation, right? Everything will be decided by reason. But around 1960s onwards, when post-modernism started, they didn't give regard neither to revelation nor to reason. But now the question comes to postmodernists, how you will going to decide what is right and what is wrong? You're not using revelation. You're not using God. You're not using reason also. You're not using scientific data. You're not using empirical data. How are you going to decide what is right and what is wrong? You're not using data on biology. How? What will be your benchmark? What will be your yardstick? You know the answer? Feelings. They say, we are going to decide everything with our feelings. How we will feel, we'll do that. So now, everything is start making sense now. Why this issue that I am a woman trapped in the body of men 
is coming now and not because not before 100 years because this is the issue tied up with the postmodernity is that clear this is uh, the postmodern uh, 101 i would say not even 101 um, i have few details if you want i can tell you uh, about postmodernity otherwise we can move forward what do you think do you want me to give you detail about postmodernity brief details from the islamic lens okay one thing about postmodernity that postmodernity believes that there is no objective truth. We believe that there is an objective truth. We believe Muslims. We believe there is Allah, right? Quran is the word of Allah. Postmodernity says, even though you might believe Quran is a book of Allah, but Quran can be interpreted in based on the feelings. So everyone can interpret their own Quran. That's postmodernists will say. Because language had that room. Does it make sense in these times when people are trying to leg legitimize homosexuality using the same Quranic verses of Lut Do You know this? I have seen and met those people who are saying where in the Quran says homosexuality is haram and you will show them these ayat. Then no, no, rape is haram because it's without consensual, without consent. With consent is fine. Malakum kayfa tahkumun. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? This is what happened when you start looking at the world through postmodern lens. You'll try to fit Islam into postmodern lens. One other thing about postmodernity um, that, and this is important, um, try to understand this why this is being imposed on Muslim communities. Do you think Muslims um, are feeling pressure from the LGBTQ right now? If you will understand this point of postmodernism, you will be able to just digest all the information then, inshallah. Postmodernism and neo-Marxism, these two philosophies are nested in together. Neo-Marxism is what? How many of you have heard woke, woke mentality, woke? Raise hand if you have heard woke, sisters. Okay, woke is a slang of neo-Marxism. So when I say neo-Marxist, it's actually woke. Okay. How many of you think you are woke? Okay, and so, yes, you are. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, literally. But now, in philosophical terms, if you see the philosophy books, neo-Marxism is defined as woke. Oh, absolutely. See, we are talking about postmodernism. People define. Yeah, yeah. We can discuss later, inshallah. We can discuss later, inshallah. So, absolutely, jazakumullah khairan. So post, so now let's understand this: neo-Marxist and postmodernism. They believe that all the hierarchies should be removed. You have to understand this. Karl Marx came a few hundred years ago, a philosopher. He said that this world is having a conflict between rich and the poor. He have a conflict-based approach to see the world. And rich people are abusing religion and other outside authority to exploit poor. And we need to take the poor outside of the oppression by asking them, leave the religion, come on top, so that they can be equal. Rich and poor can be equal. Equality can be established. Egalitarian approach can be established. Are you following, brothers and sisters? So he would see that world is from a conflict-based approach. His theory got failed. Later on, people came and they revisited his theory called as neo-Marxism. Marxist from neo-Marxist. And this is nested in postmodernism. How? They saw the world is conflict-based, but it's not rich versus poor. It's oppressor and oppressed. Listen to this carefully. You will understand why Muslims have so much pressure now. Oppressor and Oppressed, zalim and mazloom, powerful and weak, victim and victimizer. But now, question for postmodernists, question for neo Marxists or woke, how do you define what is oppressor and oppressed? They have their own definition, and that's where the problem comes on Muslim community here in the West. Listen to this. They would say, oppressor, zalim, is rich, and mazloom is poor. 
take a second, take a pause before I can go to Muslim and LGBTQ. Does it happen all the time that rich is oppressor and poor is oppressed? No. Allah says, You have to stand for justice, whether it is for the rich or for the poor in Surah An-Nisa. So this is Islamic social justice, which is different than neo-Marxist social justice. So all the social justice warriors <laughs> in Muslim community need to pay attention to this. Okay, listen to this. Then they would say, all the men are oppressor and all the women are oppressed. Now, it is true that some men are control freaks. History tells Firaun was a man, right? Biologically and psychologically, right? And Asiya was a woman. So there are some control freaks. But is that true as an exception, as a general rule? As an exception. Zalim can be a man and Zalima can also be woman. Then they go on further. They would say, heterosexuals are oppressors and whoever is against heterosexuals, whether it's homosexuals, transgenders, and 107 identities, LGBTQI, that is oppressed because they're minority, minority card. Okay, we Muslims in the Muslim majority country, we are different, but now we are here. People of the color, we are here. Anyone, anyone from a minority perspective, they will put from a victim mentality and they will put as uh, oppressed, Muslim. Now what's the problem with this? The problem with this, this entire framework of neo-Marxists, and we see the world from this angle. I'll give you one example. Do you know Joe Biden signed up for almost $5 million for Pakistani transgender youth? To teach them English, by the way. My question to you is transgender, is it minority or majority in Pakistan? Such a hypocrisy, right? You are the champions of democracy. You are the champions of democracy. A country have decided we don't need this transgenderism, but still you want to promote there because of your cultural imperialism. <laughs> this is going against your own political philosophy. But anyway, did you see neo-Marxism or postmodernism here? They will always give aid, support to what they consider as oppressed. Remember this. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, did I even say? It? Did I have a question? Or is it my theory? Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, brother, what you're saying? Neo Marxist. Yeah. Okay. Let's move forward. Now, why Muslims are having this issue? Because they will say you, and by the way, how many of you have heard this viral audio recording from the Canadian school which is going on viral these days? Uh, where the teacher said that when Ramadan came, we celebrated. Now when the Pride Month came, why are you not celebrating? Go back to your country. We Muslims become very happy. See, these non-Muslims are celebrating World Hijab Day. MashaAllah. Two months later, Pride Month will come and they will ask you to dance with them. Because they will see both of us as minority. You both need to figure out. Ethics, values, morality is up to you. But we are neo-Marxists, we are woke. In Pride Month, you might see a lesbian transgender wearing hijab, and in Pride Month, we need to change your hijab color to rainbow. If you remove revelation, honestly speaking, even if you are a modern, it's not a reasonable argument. Tit for tat. So that's why there's an additional challenge on Muslim community as a minority when we don't even know when to appreciate the support and when not to appreciate the support. And what are the fine lines of saying, okay, you can come and support us, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you and guide us. But these are our fine lines. We won't compromise in terms of Sharia compliant human rights. I'm, this is a loaded word, human rights. Sharia compliant human rights. We will support everyone, but we won't compromise on our principle. We Muslims, we are not confident enough. And that's why we are being pressured on both these sides. Once you show them that, oh, we can't do this, then the left will find out actually you are right. And right have already kicked you out. And because you didn't develop your own voice, that's why we are struggling. 
So Allah Musta'an wa alayhi tuklan wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyyil azim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all inshaAllah ta'ala. This was not to make you pessimistic or pacifistic, rather to give you ground reality. Where are we standing? It's easy to label people because it's a sensitive issue. Um, and Muslim community will take some time to come with their own discourse and systematic um, um, discourse. But this challenge is a really big challenge, how you tackle it. Some people who tried in, uh, we have some precedents, they tried the left route and they got criticism. They tried the right route from the political perspective, they got criticism. So we are coming up with our own synthesis after the thesis and antithesis. It will take some time and some patience. Stop labeling people that he's a deviant, he's a sellout. We are still figuring out. If someone does something wrong, make dua for her or him or give advice. But this is a big problem uh, and this is a big challenge for Muslims in the West. And hopefully, inshallah, by discussing this for the next few months, we can at least save our families from this disaster, inshallah ta'ala. Last thing before we can end. How much time I have? Okay, last thing before I can end. What is the worldview? Why I'm telling you this entire postmodernism and modernism? Um, how many of you think we Muslims, we have multiple worldviews? You know what worldview is? Looking at the world from different angles. So right now you're looking at this table. Yafi, what are you looking at this table? Can you see anything, any text on this table? Is there any text here? You can see, but I cannot see. But we both are looking at this table. I'm looking at this table from my own perspective because but my angle is different. You're looking at, from different angle, you can see this text. This is called world view. We are looking at world from different angles, right? Most of us Muslims in the postmodern world, we have at least two worldviews within our heart. We don't even know this. Islamic worldview and postmodern worldview. I'll give you an example. I have, um, I usually teach my kids Arabic, Urdu, sometimes Gujarati. If I'm teaching them every single day, is there a chance that once they will grow old, they will be able to learn and comprehend Urdu and Arabic and Gujarati if I'm teaching them every day? There's a chance, right? But if I'm not teaching them Urdu or Arabic or Gujarati here in Richardson, then the chances are very slim that they will be able to grab Urdu, Arabic, or Gujarati, right? Okay. But if I'm not teaching them English, will they be able to understand and comprehend English? Why? Because predominant language is English. Apply this in your worldviews. What is the predominant worldview right now of the West? Islam or postmodernity? From Netflix. When Netflix is teaching you Miss Marvel, super Muslim hero, are they teaching you? How many of you have seen Miss Marvel? Okay, I see I stuck for a laughter, Aisha, inshallah. <laughs> no, I have it. Subhanallah. Okay, so when they are teaching you, are they teaching you from Islamic angle or postmodern angle? Postmodern angle. There is one example coming, subhanAllah. Um, if they are, when we ask our own Muslim kids, you know, subhanAllah, this will come later. Islam connected, and I'm using this word because I put the age restriction, but because today we made an exception, I'll use conservative language. That relationship with men and women have, that relationship Islam connected with marriage and reproduction, yes? In Islam, we say anything appropriate relationship would be after marriage with your spouse and inappropriate will be premarital, extramarital, right? Are you following brothers and sisters? When you see Netflix, I'm talking about worldviews, or when you see your school teacher or environment or social sciences or humanities or anything, when they are discussing about this relationship, this particular act, I'm not using the word, do they talk about this from a postmodern, modern perspective or Islamic perspective? Absolutely, they don't have any Islam. Whether they define appropriate relationship is with consent, an inappropriate relationship is without consent. Now come to this. We Muslims, I'm just telling you how two, we have two worldviews, you don't even know this, subhanAllah. We Muslims, we told our kids that you are supposed to get married after your graduation, not before your graduation, right? Okay. And after your graduation, you need to become something, right? 
I don't know, again, we are postmodernists, we don't even know what something is. So, wait a minute. So Google, simply Google search will prove it, that most of the American people will lose their virginity, will have that relationship before they will graduate high school. But they say, because marriage is a responsibility because they disconnected marriage with that relationship. So they say, take that responsibility. You can have relationship, that's fine. But take that responsibility when you are ready. When you have three, four kids, when they are starting going to high school, all said, now you can get married. Now when we, as with a defeatist mentality, Muslims in America, most of us came here for finances reason. When we ask our kids, do not get married, before graduation, it means we want them to follow Islamic paradigm, not to have that relationship, but also the postmodern paradigm in education, but Islamic paradigm in that relationship. It's like you are asking your son, when he's hungry, do not eat this halal meat, do not eat this haram meat. What will happen? He'll become crazy. And crazy person can do anything. I'm not justifying this act, but this is what happens when you have two different worldviews. Now come back to this. Did I give you language example? You remember? Another language example. You know in language we do code switching? How many of you are IT guys? Okay, you know in code switching in language, if I'm giving khutbah in English, I would say, we all should have a taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khutbah was in English. How many times have I repeated Arabic words? Taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was Arabic, but khutbah was supposed to be in English. But came out of unconscious, from my subconscious, and I assume everyone will know this. Khutbah was in English. I immediately did the code switching from English to Arabic. Same thing happened with your worldviews. You are Muslim, but you do code switching based on the situation. If you would ask your brother, who is drinking all the time, every weekend he's spending in Vegas, that brother. Or the sister who is not muhajjiba at all. Can you eat pork? What they will say, Muslim. Even if they are not wearing hijab, no, no, astaghfirullah, pork is haram. Why? Because it's socially considered awkward. Right? Same sister you will ask, why don't you wear hijab? She will say, my body, my choice. Yeah, personal bodily autonomy. Who are you? You should control your gaze. Patriarchal, patriarchal, tyrannical society and so on and so forth. Similarly for brothers. Did, did you just notice she immediately code switched the worldview? She's a Muslim. She might be Fatima, you might be Abdullah. But on one angle you are Muslim. On another angle you did the code switch, you become postmodernist. They're so, I didn't even start worldview discussion. We'll start next time because time is over. But one thing to... One thing to note here, we all have multiple, at least two different worldviews at this point. If you are not teaching your kids and yourself Islamic worldview, by default, worldview is postmodern worldview. That will come into you. Your allergy towards religion, your allergy towards religious people and tradition is coming from the postmodernism. When you want to be cool and stay away from tradition and religious people, that is the garbage of the postmodernism which we are just importing it. And we need to shift delete, shift delete so that we can put Islam into our heart. But this is extremely, extremely important to just deconstruct postmodern worldview so that we can construct Islamic worldview. SubhanAllah, I was talking to someone. Islamic worldview believes in dunya and akhirah, right? Postmodern worldview and modern worldview doesn't believe in akhirah. They only believe in dunya. <laughs> this is how many Muslims are becoming postmodernists in their worldview? Or modernists in their worldview? If your kid doesn't wake up for Salatul Fajr, Balev, Salah is mandatory. Abdullah is 15 years old, Fatima is 17 years old. If you're waking them up for Salatul Fajr at 6.30, you wake them up once, twice, and you will say, oh, actually they're tired, let them sleep, right? After 30 minutes, they have to go to school. You will go against their consent I'm using this word deliberately, consent, because next time it will come. You will go against 
their choice, their freedom, their feelings, their consent. Loaded terms, right? And sometimes you will discipline them. <clears throat> but they will go to school then. Why so much emphasis on the worldly thinking and why not in Akhirah? Because our worldview are becoming postmodern worldview. I'm not saying don't send them to school, by the way. This is another problem, subhanAllah. We have to send them to school. We, we want them to flourish. We, we want in our Muslim community next is Steve Jobs, inshallah. We want next Mark Zuckerberg. Can you imagine if we had one Sharia compliant Mark Zuckerberg or uh, Steve Jobs? How much benefit we're going to have? Most of these problems are coming because of economics reasons and corporate companies. Imagine if we have say in it. Um, SubhanAllah. We say a lot, okay, should we involve in politics or not? Is it a necessary evil? Leave politics. Why don't we have our Muslim entrepreneurs who flourished? Means out of 10 Ashra Mubashra, six were 10 companions who were given glad tidings of Jannah by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Six were rich people. Rasulullah says, Ni'mal ma da salih, abdus salih. The best of the wealth is the wealth of the righteous person. Again, listen to the translation. The best of the wealth is the wealth of the righteous person. You are saying a righteous person should be miskeen. How do you reconcile with this hadith? Can you imagine righteous person is wealthy, how much benefit he can get to Muslim community? So again, we have to keep it balanced, but again, we have two different worldviews. Postmodern worldview is dominating, and we see the world, and that's why the argument will come, why you are against this community and that community, because our worldview is different. Next time when we will come, we'll start the entire discussion of the components of worldview, and the paradigms of sexuality, gender identity, and that one particular word which I'm not using, because today I promise I won't use any um, open language, I'll be using any conservative words, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, last few minutes, if you have any questions, you can go at 10.15, is there a shah, right? Any questions before we can end? Today was just the introduction, inshallah. Next time we might open it up, inshallah. Any questions so far? Was this level okay, or is it too philosophical? You have to tell me. Um, not this detail. I've, I will give this workshop um, in INT. If you're looking for one 30 minute uh, miskeen tab workshop, um, then you can come in that um, on February 16th, uh, June 16th. Um, yeah, on Friday night. Um, this will go continue inshallah, um, where we will open it up inshallah, uh, more details inshallah. But if you have any questions, sisters, if you have any questions inshallah, please you can ask, otherwise we'll end.